Good morning. Got to make sure I'm, there we are. Happy Easter, Christ is risen. You, we are Easter people. We have a wonderful program for you this morning, a wonderful worship service. Um, I just want to say on behalf of the whole church community, um, we want to thank all of you for joining us today, both here in the sanctuary and online, or if you're watching our recording later. Um, please take a few moments now to center yourself in the song and worship that we're about to encounter through our choir and through our brass and through our piano, all of it coming together to wish, up, wish us and center us for an amazing Easter morning. be our opening hymn and it, you will sing along to it. They'll let you know when that part is. Thank you. 
Thank you, choir, and thank you to all of our Gonzaga students that are here today and helping us with bring a wonderful pre, uh, production to our Easter worship. Um, I do want to uh, make a couple of announcements, and then I'll make some introductions. Um, I just want to announce a couple of things that are coming up. First of all, we have an Easter egg hunt for kids after the service today. And we also have a time of fellowship in our fellowship hall. So I hope you'll join us for that at the close of the service. A couple of things that are coming up in the next uh, month or so. Um, we will have an Earth Day celebration on April 21st, right at noon, noon to two. Uh, we also have a rummage sale coming up. It is our annual rummage sale, May 10th and 11th, and it has, um, it's two days of really good, good stuff, good stuff. So um, this year we're also going to have a bake sale there, and Evelyn is here to talk about that. Yes, we are going to have a bake sale both days, and this is baked goods for the people who are shopping to keep them here shopping longer and buying, but also <laughs> baked goods that they can take home with them. So if you would please let me know over the next month what you can provide, the uh, type of baked goods you'll be providing, and these need to be at the church by the 8th of May so that we can get them set up and priced. And so again, very good bakers here as we saw yesterday. So once again, we've got a month and we look forward to having more baked goods. Please let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Evelyn. Um, I do want to say thank you to all who have helped bring this um, amazing uh, altar to us today. I believe that was Sue and Polly helped to do that. John has helped hang, hang banners and um, Anne helped get everything ready downstairs. So um, we owe a special thank you to all of them for helping us get ready the, today for Easter. Um, also, okay, let me make some announcements here. Um, so I'm Pastor Sandy and this is Ellie at the piano. Um, this is Austina here, who is our uh, sign language interpreter. Anne is our liturgist today. She is our song leader. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, John is our liturgist. They're, they switch places. Um, but I also want to make a special uh, introduction of all the folks that are here from Gonzaga. So first we have our own Dr. Jadrian Tarver. I'm not sure where he went. Is he over there? Oh, I can't see him behind the podium. He's the one who has directed all of this today. And our students, if you want to stand up so they know who you are, Ethan McVicker, who does our trumpet and piano. Ethan's going to help do a... Woohoo, Ethan. <laughs> and Lily Franklin on trumpet. Madeline Smathers on horn. Uh, Sam Morozov on trombone. Aiden Tabra on tuba. Kaylee Keating, who you see so many weeks here, our soprano. And Grace Kirsch is here today, also on soprano. And also Joan, Joan um, Giordano, who is our alto. You've seen Joan here before, too. And, and we have one more, and I didn't get your name. Nick. Nate. Nick. Nick. Oh, this is Nick. Yes. Thanks for being here, Nick. And then we have a couple folks in the booth upstairs helping to bring um, our audio visual. And we have uh, Bob and um, Jim and, of course, Bill. Thank you for being up there. Oh, have I forgotten anybody? I think I've got it all. Okay. So... Uh, we have, as I said, a wonderful um, morning of worship planned for you. Also, if you are worshiping online, if you have our, the ability to just put a note in the chat uh, on the screen, we can, um, we can give a shout out to you as well. So thank you for being here. Let's proceed with our call to worship. John, will you help with that? The words will be on the screen. The tomb is dark but empty. One who has overcome the darkness. The stone has, darkness. the stone has been rolled away. The one you are looking for has overcome death. The burial clothes are put aside. 
The one you are looking for is alive. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us worship our risen Savior. Will you join me in prayer? Loving and powerful God, joy floods over our souls on this day. Christ is risen. Open our hearts and our spirits to receive fully the joy which has been given for us. Let us celebrate the victory of Christ and the hope for the future. In Jesus' name, amen. And now John is going to read our first part of our scripture from the book of John. So our first reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. We're going to take a moment now and um, see if some kids want to come forward. We have a little time for kids, and we have some, some candy to pass up. Candy? <laughs> Are there any kids that want to come forward and get some candy? 
You can come with your mom or dad or grandma or whoever if you'd like. <laughs> we have some candy. <laughs> oh, we have some big kids. <laughs> Do you want some candy? <laughs> oh, there's a big kid. <laughs> How many are you going to get? <laughs> <laughs> you can pass out some to the other kids, oh, okay, too. Oh, <laughs> sure. Okay, sure. Okay. okay. Oops. Have a seat. <laughs> you can have a seat. <laughs> Happy Easter. You can sit up here if you want. <laughs> Can you tell me your name? Thank you. McCall? And what is this your brother? And Ozzy? Augie. Augie. Augie and McCall are here. Thank you for being here. Oh, what a cool watch you have. I like it. So um, we have some jelly beans here. And um, I just want to mention a couple things about this. We have a season in our church called Lent. Have you ever heard of Lent? Lent is this time... It's kind of between, well, this year was actually after Valentine's Day, and it went all the way to Easter. And Lent is like a Latin word from a Latin word that means spring. So springtime is this time that we've been kind of celebrating. And these jelly beans remind me of springtime because they have so many bright colors. If you look at our flowers and things here, they're all blooming in different colors. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah. And... Um, the, the wonderful thing about springtime, what reminds us why we have Lent, is it's a time of new life. And that's what Easter is about, is a time of new life. And we see it in, East, in all of our nature around us. So we see, like, plants springing to new life, flowers coming out, trees coming out with um, leaves, and all kinds of springtime kind of uh, happenings. And so that's what these colors also represent, lots of spring colors. I want to also let you guys know we have something called, we call it our playground. It's like a playground with stuff for, in church. And you can, if you get bored, you can go over there and you can, there's like stickers and coloring and stuff, books and stuff that you are welcome to sit at. Because I know church can get like maybe a little boring <laughs> if you're a kid. I've been a kid in church before too. So um, I just wanted to take a special moment and say thank you for being here. I'm glad you could come today. Do you have a, um, do you have a, did you do any Easter egg hunting? Mm-hmm. I ran in and Papa's house this Did you? Morning. Did you? Did you get some good eggs? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. That's good. Well, I'm glad you're here. Um, I'm going to say just a quick prayer for you, and then we'll, we'll continue. Dear God, we thank you for Lent. We thank you for Easter. We thank you for all the new signs of spring and we thank you that new life is here with us today, the day of Easter. Thank you, God, for these children. Bless them as they um, have a wonderful Easter and hopefully a, a wonderful spring break, probably from school, too. So we um, thank you again for be, having them and bringing them here to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for being here. Do you need some more candy? Yeah, I think you do. <laughs> Here's some more. Well, now we come to a more serious time in our service where we remember our uh, many of our Manitou friends and family and loved ones in our prayers this week. There are several folks that are um, living with or recovering from illness or accidents and injuries. Um, so we remember Joanne Taylor and Darlene Townsend, um, also Shelly Cooney. Um, we remember Mary Alice, who is not, I don't, she may be downstairs today. Um, also, um, Dorothy, who had a little injury this week and is here with us this morning, but arm in a sling. So we're praying for a good recovery for Dorothy. And um, also just wanted to mention that last week we prayed for Keely and her heart cath. And um, I was told this morning that that went through very all well and, and good, right? Okay. Are there any other prayer requests this morning? Uh, I'd like to pray for 
Yes. Peace in, the world. peace in the world. Thank you, Mark. We need peace in the world. And this is a day that should be, we should be lifting up peace. Thank you. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us be a people of prayer. God of awesome joy, be with us this day as we celebrate the resurrection of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let the light of your love flood into our lives and through us to all who need companionship and healing and freedom and hope and peace. As we witness the surprise of the women at the tomb, the appearance of the Savior to Mary and her good news that was brought to the disciples, let us remember that this good news exists for us also today. Darkness does not win. Death is not victorious. Christ is risen for all of us. We are lifted with Christ to a new life of hope and service. Let the joy of this good news swirl around in our hearts. Let excitement for service and ministry burst forth from us. Let us truly be the Easter people that you have called us to be. For we ask these things in the name of the risen Lord, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now John is going to come and read for us the second half of the scripture this morning. So our second reading is a continuation of the first. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. We pray for many people in this church, our congregation members, our families, our friends, and our extended community. Last May, I brought a prayer request um, for some friends of mine, Bob and Susan Marner Sides. Susan is one of my beloved clergy colleagues in Missouri, and um, she's someone I've known for over 20 years. Bob, her husband, at that time was at the end of his life, and he subsequently passed away on May 13th. As Bob was several years older than Susan, Susan had taken uh, a retirement early so that they could spend many of their good years together. Bob was an amazing man. He was a farmer, a father, a grandfather, a wonderful clergy spouse, or as my husband calls himself, a clergy wife, and a longtime devoted member of the Bernie United Methodist Church in the southeast uh, corner of the, known as the Boot Hill of Missouri. In fact, the church is where he had met Susan when she was serving there as a pastor. And shortly after Bob's death, the Bernie Church decided to disaffiliate from the United Methodist Church. And Susan knew that this would have broken Bob's heart, as it did many others as well. After the vote to disaffiliate passed, 
Susan found the people who wanted to stay United Methodist standing outside the church in shock. And someone spoke the words which they were all thinking, what are we going to do now? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to have church at my house, Susan said. And they did just that the very next Sunday. Twenty people showed up to her farmhouse. And though they didn't fit in one room, Pastor Susan stood between two rooms and preached to both. They met again there the following week. And by week three, a family in the congregation announced that they had a property available which could serve as a large meeting space. That day, that Sunday, the New Day United Methodist Church was born. New Day UMC is a resurrection story. New life has sprung out of darkness and despair of the breakup. In just a few days, the dawning of a new ministry and faith community took root from a splintered congregation. An empty storefront became a place of worship and service. And my amazing friend found herself resurrected from grief and retirement into a new pastoring role, leading a church that she had never even imagined. Today, Easter Sunday, begins the season in our church known as Easter Tide. It's a 50-day celebration of Jesus' resurrection. Easter Tide will take us from the day today, which we honor Jesus' ascent, uh, Easter, to um, the day that we honor Jesus' ascension into heaven, and the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit will become present to all. We read about the birth, the ministry, the life, the death, and resurrection of Jesus in the four gospel books of the Bible. They all tell the stories a little differently, but together we get a beautiful picture of God's will for people and all of creation through the teachings of Christ. Before Jesus is even born, the priest Zechariah tells us, by the tender mercy of our God, the dawn of from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Today is that dawning of tender mercy breaking into us, giving us light, guiding us to peace. Today we re read and remember the discovery that Mary Magdalene found at the tomb of her beloved friend and teacher, Jesus. She is sad and visibly upset as she looks for the body of Jesus at that garden setting of the tomb. The stone has been rolled away and she sees two angels who ask her why she is weeping. And Mary says out loud, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. A man who Mary presumes to be the gardener asks, also asks her why she is weeping. And she tells him, If you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him. But the gardener is not who she thinks he is. He says, Mary. And the sound of his voice grips her soul. Speaking her name out loud helps Mary to see the gardener as the Lord that she came in search of. With one word, one blessed moment of spiritual connection, Jesus assures Mary and all of us that his love and care for us is personal. Jesus invokes a presence that is more than just a physical being a few feet away. Jesus brings to us the blessing, the very witness of God's reality as loving and generous and gracious. This truly is the dawn of a new day, but it started in darkness. This very Jesus who just three days before experienced the darkness of injustice by the authorities and indifference by the crowds, this is the Jesus who knew mental anguish and physical suffering and rejection and betrayal and loneliness. His life became a scandal 
and he was shamed and vulnerable. He was dishonored and broken and defeated in body, mind, and spirit. But he stood in solidarity with the suffering that we all experience at one time or another. What wondrous love is this, that a man so badly defeated at the hands of humanity would rise up in the darkness of the wee hours of the morning to a new life. And in the dawn of this new day, he offers himself as both comfort and counselor to Mary with the grace that is his signature style. This is the authenticity of our Savior. Crucified as human, but now resurrected in divine love for each of us. Jesus was a healer, a teacher, and a transformer. Jesus was passionate about building people up to build up God's kingdom. In this garden scene, there is no fanfare. There is just Jesus, who is life-giving, inspired and drawn to providing relief to anyone suffering. The resurrection is not an end. It's a new beginning. It doesn't end in the garden. It's a new opportunity to encounter Jesus like Mary did. A time to dwell in the presence of light and love of Christ that dispels the shadows of the things that help to bring us down. It's a time to be participants and witnesses to new life. A time to be Easter people, alive and centered in a faith and trust and a God who bears all things. Easter people, raise your voices. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. May you know the one who rose in the darkness now leads to us into new life, a new light and new hope. May we find him in the half-lit and hard places of our lives. May we dare to linger at the graveside until he calls our names. And may we always share with hope the news of God's greatest mystery. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. We're going to join together now in singing Christ has risen. It is um, in your black hymnals on page 2115, but the words will also be on the screen. Please rise and body your spirit.
seated. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy mystery that is holy love. You are beyond complete knowledge, above perfect description. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, source of life, living word, and bond of love, you are creative and self-giving, generously moving in all the near and distant corners of this universe. Nothing exists that does not find its source in you. Through fear-filled days and aching nights, when the powers of death have done their worst, your love has never deserted us. Even when we turn away from you, you are with us. Your presence never fails us. Your gifts of hope and new life transform us. We praise you for Jesus Christ, risen to life, eternal as your love. With the women at the tomb, we raise the strain of gladness. Hallelujah. Life is stronger than death. The day of resurrection has come, scattering fear and doom. And so we rejoice with all your people of every time and place and with angels and archangels to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. It is Jesus, God incarnate, the risen Christ who joins us together as a community of broken but hopeful believers, loving what he loved, living what he taught, and striving to be his faithful servants in our time and in our place. In this meal, we remember Jesus, has, Jesus and his promises and the price he paid for who he was, what he said, and what he did. On the night before Jesus died, he took a loaf of bread and he broke it and said, this is my body, a blessing for all of you. Remember me as often as you eat of it. And after the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks saying, this is the new covenant, a cup of grace and blessing. Whenever you drink of it, remember me. We do nothing. We, we remember. We remember his life of love, his friendship, his teaching, his dying, and his rising to life again. And sharing this meal, we live out the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Holy mystery, God of the Spirit, we call on you to transform these familiar things as you continually transform the world around us. Bless this bread and this cup, the wheat and the grape, the farmer and the harvest, the seed and the sower, so that in the sharing of these simple elements in this community, we may taste and see your goodness. We are fed by your love. We are strengthened by your life. We are sent forth into this world to live your way and share your joy. We are now commissioned to feed as we have been fed, to forgive as we have been forgiven, to love as we have been loved. Through Christ, in Christ and with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, God most holy, now and forever. Amen. Friends, this communion table tables remind us that we feast in unity. At this table, we all know the bond of love and abundant mercy. And today we will do communion by the intinction method. That means um, we will I will offer you a piece of bread. John will hold the cup and you can dip your bread into the cup. 
If you need a um, gluten-free option, we also have that. We have gluten-free crackers, and we have a separate juice for that. Um, if you need communion brought to you, just, bring, just raise your hand, and we'll do that for you as well. Um, all right, come to the table.
morning we um, come to a time when we are um, talking about our offering and we have a couple of different ways that we are giving this morning. Um, one is to our regular uh, budget that helps maintain um, the flow of operations here. Um, I mentioned a few weeks back that we have well over 400 people that travel through this building for different services uh, that are offered here in this space. Um, so the regular offering helps support that and supports all of our ministry efforts in, in helping to raise hel whole and healthy lives here. Um, a second way that you can give this morning is through um, a special offering called uh, that we are donating to our Spokanescape project. Did you want to say a couple words about that? Yeah. Okay. And while she's coming forward, Maureen's going to tell us a little bit about Spokanescape. Um, and then I uh, also want to mention that because we have so many wonderful Gonzaga students here today, we are also taking a uh, special offering um, that supports our Gonzaga student music program. And you will find those uh, that offering available through um, some little white baskets here. So if you um, feel so inclined to support the student music program, we very much appreciate that, and it helps for us to helps us to be able to pay these musicians and students and and help support them while they are continuing to study at Gonzaga. So, um, please know that these are all great projects that you're contributing to. Maureen's going to tell us a little bit about Spokanescape, sure, our special offering this morning. I'm one of the co-chairs of the, our project that we that we've called um, Recreating God's Corner. And last year, as you probably know, the city of Spokane put restrictions on its outdoor watering policy. And so that led to a discussion here at, at Manitou about our water use. And just about the same time, uh, United Methodist Global Ministries held a conference for projects kind of along that line. And uh, Pastor Sandy and, and uh, Reinhardt and I were able to go to that. And we came up with kind of an outline and some goals. And uh, some of those goals are changing our water use so that it's more eco-friendly and sustainable. We also want to provide a... Uh, place for a spiritual connection through nature and, a, and providing a place for pollinators. Because we have a really prime piece of real estate here on this arterial, we want to be a model for the community for anyone else who'd be interested in uh, changing their lawns. Uh, we also wanted to engage with our building users and it, our community to show them a new way to do church. And finally, we want to bring joy to the neighborhood with an inviting space full of colors, textures, and scents. And just in the last few weeks, we've had some really positive developments about our project. Uh, Sue Plummer, my co-chair, uh, gave a really nice presentation on March 17th about the whole project. We have uh, seeds that have been planted and are sprouting. Uh, we were contacted by a member of our Boy Scout troop because one of them is looking for an Eagle Scout project, and he has signed on to help us. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, Wednesday, Sue and I met with a consultant from Waterwise Spokane to look at our design, and um, she was extremely encouraging, and our design was improved, which means we can go on and apply for a rebate from the city for changing our landscape. And we also found out uh, one of the things that we wanted to do, which was uh, modify our irrigation system from a drip uh, mist system to a drip system, uh, also makes us eligible for a second rebate from the city. So this is a long-term project. Our first section of it is going to be the square or kind of the wedge on the corner that's about a thousand square feet and we hope to have that done hopefully this year and then move on to other areas of the lawn so thank you so support our our project of um, creation care and climate justice here on right here on our own corner will the ushers please come forward and take the morning offering <laughs>
Let us sing, Lord, I place all I am in your hands. words of benediction. Generous God, you have given us all that we have and all that we are. We thank you for the opportunity to respond to your love and generosity by sharing these gifts with others. Bless this offering to be used in your service. Amen. And now hear these words of benediction. Sorry. <laughs> Christ is risen and he goes before us into this world of fear and pain. He has called us to bring the good news of healing and hope hope and redemption. So go in peace and feel the presence of the risen Lord with you now and forever. Amen. Our brass is going to come back and we're going to close out our service this morning with singing Lift High the Cross.
stay and hear the postlude. For now, go in peace and may God's peace go with you. Happy Easter. Amen. Seat, and then you can leave because it's, we're holding you hostage. <laughs>